Hey everyone, today we'll be looking at the FE exam electrical and magnetism topic of DC circuit analysis. And there are a few approaches you can take to DC circuit analysis, so in this video we're going to focus on the superposition method. So we're going to look at the DC circuit shown here, and we're going to follow the five steps outlined on your left. So superposition is the idea of taking a circuit with more than one voltage or current source, and as you can see in our original circuit we have two voltage sources, simplifying it so that you are dealing with a circuit with just a single voltage source, evaluating your terms, and then summing them up at the end. So again, if we look at our first step here, we're going to short one of the voltage sources. It doesn't matter which one. You can see we've shorted the voltage source on the right over here. And now we have a circuit with just a single voltage source, and it makes it a lot easier to evaluate. So if we analyze this now, and we can give some names to these resistors, we can call this R1, we can call this R2, and we can call this R3, we see that R2 and R3, those resistors are parallel, and R1 and the total of R2 and R3, those resistors are in series. So next, we need to evaluate the circuit. And to do so, we can turn to our FE handbook. And here we have an excerpt of the handbook, and it gives you the rules in the electrical engineering section for resistors in series and parallel. And namely, we could see that series connections, the current in all resistors is the same, and the equivalent resistance is the sum. For parallel resistors, the voltage drop across each resistor is the same, and we can calculate the total resistance using either one of these two equations. They equal out to the same thing. So we're going to evaluate our simplified circuit using those rules. There are many different approaches to doing this. Everyone has one that they prefer. I'm going to show you the method that I think makes it the most organized and the simplest to solve. What I like to do is I like to start with Ohm's law first. So voltage equals current times resistance, V equals IR. And we're going to make a little chart of V equals IR. So we'll put our Ohm's law down here on the side. And then across the top, we're going to work with our resistors, and we're going to start backwards. So if we simplify this, the first thing we want to do is combine our parallel resistors and then add those to our series resistor over here. So if we're working backwards, we're going to start with our series resistor, which we said was R1. And then we said R2 is over here, and R3. So R1 is going to be in series with R2, R3, the total. And then once you combine those, we're going to get one overall total resistance. So now we just fill in the chart. The resistance at R1, we can read it right off the diagram, is 1 ohm. The resistance from R2 and R3 combined in parallel, we have to calculate. So we can use that equation from the handbook. We can say that the total resistance between those two parallel resistors is the product of those resistors divided by the sum. So if we do that, it doesn't work out to a very nice number, and oftentimes that'll be the case, but we'll get a value of 0.86. And then, again, using the rules from the previous slide, our resistors in series can simply be added. So our total resistance for the entire circuit is going to be 1.86 ohms. Now, what other information do we have from the diagram? Well, we do have the voltage source here, and we know that that's the total voltage across the circuit, so we can add that in, 2 volts here. And now you can see we know that V equals IR. If we have V and we have R, we can find I. So I'm just going to show in this one particular case. So our I is going to be our V divided by our R. So this will work out to be 1.08 amps. And we saw from our excerpt from the FE handbook, again, we're considering the series resistors here that in a series circuit our current is going to be constant across all resistors so we can fill in this current across the board. Now we can do the same math in the opposite direction. If we have I and we have R we can find V just by multiplying. So 
1.08 times 1 is 1.08, and 1.08 times 0.86 is going to give us around 0.92. And we could see that this makes sense, because as we said before, in a series circuit, our voltages should sum, so 1.08 plus 0.96 gives us 2 volts. So it looks like that checks out. So now we can see that what we're looking for is the current across the 2 ohm resistor. We found the current across the parallel sum of the 2 and 3 ohm resistor. So we're going to have to break this one down a little bit further to find our 2's current. So what we'll do is we'll do the same thing we did before. We'll make a little chart. Now we'll just use R2, R3, and their total. And again, we'll have VIR. And we know that we already have the details for R2 and R3, the total, so we can fill that in. This is supposed to be 0.92. And 1.08. And 0.86. And now the resistor values, we can read directly off of our diagram. So R2 is the 2 ohm resistor. R3 is the 1.5 ohm resistor. And now since we're in parallel, it's not our current that stays constant, it's actually our voltage. So now our voltage will stay consistent. And we can solve for the current using the same approach that we laid out here. We could take the voltage, 0.92, divide it by 2. And 0.92 divided by 1.5. And again, if we add 0.46 and 0.61, we should end up pretty close to 1.08. So now we have found the current value through just the 2 ohm resistor. So our current value is 0.46 amps. So now we're halfway there. So our next step is to short the opposite voltage source. So now we've shorted the voltage source on the left, and now we're going to repeat much the same procedure again. So we'll go back to our handbook, we'll look at the same rules we used last time, and now we'll do an evaluation. So again, I'm going to make my little chart here, V, I, and R, and this time we could see that it's actually R1 and R3 that are parallel, and those two are in series with R2. So we have R1, 3, and we have R2, and then we have our R total. So R2 we can fill in, it's 2 ohms. R13 we can determine, it's going to be 1 ohm times 1.5 ohms over 1 ohm plus 1.5 ohms. And if we do the math there, that should give us 0.6. And then, since these are in series, we can add them across. So 0.6 plus 2 is going to give us 2.6. Again, we can look at our voltage. That's given here. That's our total voltage. That's going to be 2 volts. And we can do the division. 2 divided by 2.6 will give us 0.77. Again, we're in series here, so it's 0.77 across all the currents. And now we can do our multiplication. 0.6 times 0.77 is around 0.46. 2 times 0.77 is around 0.154. And you can see that when we add these, we get 2. Now you'll notice we don't have to do a second iteration of this table to break down R1, R3, because R2 is the resistor current we care about. So in this case, we can read that resistor value directly. It's 0.77. So now we have 0.77 amps. So now our final step. We're going to take the current that we read over here, which was 0.46 amps, and we're going to add that to the current value we read over here, which is 0.77 amps. And we'll get a total current value through the 2 ohm resistor of 1.23 amps. And now we've solved this using superposition, and we haven't had to break out Kirchhoff's laws. 
Now, you very well could use Kirchhoff's laws if you prefer. It's very much a preference, and we'll have another video where we cover those. So again, in summary, you want a short one voltage source. This also works on a current source if you have two current sources and you need to solve something that way. You'll solve for the terms using your basic series and parallel rules. There are a lot of different approaches to this. I prefer to make a chart, but a lot of people have other ways of doing it. You'll short your second voltage source and you'll repeat the evaluation. And then you'll take the values you got from step two and step four and you'll add them together to get your result. Enjoying these videos? Follow the links in the description below to find out how you could reach out for personal tutoring, like and subscribe to get notified when new videos drop, and comment with suggestions for future topics.